Are assassins dead? Are there any good Strybreaker abusers left? Are mages now the dominant force on the rift? Well, all of these questions and more are about to be answered. And hello, Game Leaper. It's your host, The Jizz. And in today's video, we are going to be revealing the 20 best champions of the new 1113 patch, which is one of the biggest patches of all time. There were a ton of item changes that focus on reducing all the mobility in the game and a fair few champion changes to boot. And as always, I want you to tell me in the comments your thoughts on our countdown and the champion you would have as the most OP given what's in store. Now, speaking of stores, GameWeep.com. I cannot stress to you how valuable our site to anyone looking to master a champion is, to perfect a role, to learn what it takes to be a challenger. Myself and our other creators are uploading close to 20 elite videos a week that are already being consumed by thousands of you, so join the squad, don't miss out. Links as always in the description and comment section. Alright, let's get into the list guys, and starting off the countdown coming in at number 20 is Lee Sin, who's actually getting nerfed this patch, and his items are also getting nerfed as well, so Black Cleaver, you're losing a bit of movement speed in one of its passives, so each time you damage your opponent, you're getting less movement speed, but what's also interesting here is that for Lee Sin, his E is getting nerfed at later ranks, so the damage. Now the good thing here about Lee still, is that the level 1 damage on your E is still going to be the same, so now it might mean you only put 3 points in your E and not 5, but still, the power is still there in the early game. Your laning is still going to be good, right, because your trading will still be good, your sustain is good, your setup is good, you've got everything you still want, so this won't move him out of the mid and top lane, and it still keeps his strength in the jungle. So Lee Sin comes in at number 20 now, beating Lee Sin to the number 19 spot, I haven't talked about this support for ages, and this is Sona. Now, why is Sona coming in next? Well, first of all, even without this Moonstone Renewer buff coming in 11.13, Sona has at least a 53% win rate in high reloads at the moment, which is obviously going to be one of the highest. Now, next patch with each stack of Moonstone giving more, so 7% and not 6%, this means that Sona's AoE healing is just going to be way more impactful, and you're going to be able to carry more games, so Sona comes in at number 19. Now, beating Sona to the number 18 spot, guys, similar to Lee Sin, we have Nocturne coming in. Now, yes, for Nocturne, your Mythic Stripe Breaker is getting changed, so you no longer have a dash. This is completely gone, but what you do have is a 90% slow now and an active that's going to deal more damage. Now, the reason Nocturne stays on this countdown and pretty much every other Stripe Breaker abuser has fallen off, like Darius, like Garen, is because with Nocturne, your ultimate, this allows you to get on a champion straight away. It's almost like a mini Stripe Breaker in a way, right? You don't actually need that dash as much as others. Whereas Darius, whereas Urgot, whereas Garen, these guys can get kited. They can't instantly jump onto an enemy carry. So with Nocturne, when you ult onto someone and you use your Stride Breaker active, they're slowed by 90%. Like it's even harder for them to get away and Stride Breaker as a result is even more impactful. Now you are getting a little less damage from the item and in the laning phase, especially if you're playing mid Nocturne against ranged champions, Stride Breaker really isn't going to be that effective. So Nocturne is probably going to be exclusively played in the top lane and still a bit in the jungle, but he is still going to be good. So he comes in at number 18. Now beating Nocturne to number 17, guys, like so. Now I haven't mentioned Anivia for a few patches now, but next patch, Anivia is going to be back. I mean, she's still good, but next patch, because Luden's Tempest, Leandra's Anguish, and Everfrost, you know, whatever mythic item you choose, these are 200 gold cheaper. And Anivia, as we all know, is one of the best scaling mages in the game, right? So the fact you're getting to this big mythic power spike earlier simply means that you're going to be in a better position to just carry more games. And one of the great things about Anivia is that, yes, okay, in the early lane, it can be a little hard to play, but once you get to level 6 and you have your ultimate, it's easy to CS, it's easy to farm and impact fights, and it's honestly very hard not to do well. So the Cry of Phoenix comes in at number 17. Then this next champion, guys, coming in at number 16. I mentioned for Lee Sin, Black Cleaver is getting nerfed. Well, for Riven, same thing. Black Cleaver, the less movement speed. This is a nerf as well, but like Lee Sin as well, guys, Riven is getting directly nerfed. So your E shield is going to be shielding you for less. But here's the thing, the actual shield itself isn't really what makes Riven OP. It's the cooldown of the shield and the fact that this shield lets you animation cancel your ultimate and your Qs. It like starts off your combos. So even if Riot were to half your shield value, this still wouldn't really have that much of an impact. So Riven comes in at number 16, guys, still going to be very strong. Now we're into the top 15, and starting us off here, we have Rumble coming in at number 15. And some of you might be like, how is Rumble in the top 15 or even on this countdown? Because he's getting two nerfs. Now Jungle Rumble, yes, it's going to be worse because your W's cooldown is increasing to 7 seconds. And also your W's movement speed, where you're getting less from it. But what I'm focusing on here, guys, is Lane Rumble. Your Q is still there, your Overheat is still there, your 50% attack speed is still there, your E is still there. Okay, you might not dodge as many skill shots with your W, you might not gap close to as many enemies, you might not escape as many situations, but these are going to be few and far between. Your early game power is still there, your oppressiveness, you're going to get to your Sorcerer's Shoes, your Hextech Rocket Belt Spike for pretty much free. So Rumble has to stay on this list, guys, despite these nerfs. Now, another mid laner is coming in at number 14, guys, and this is Katarina. And for Katarina, it's actually a good patch, mainly because you're not getting nerfed. 
go, which I was expecting because Katarina has like a 50-51% win rate. And for a champion like Katarina, who's played a lot and has, well, kind of a high skill ceiling, this is somewhat alarming. But seeing as nothing is really changing in terms of your Sorcerer Shoes, your Rift Maker, your Nash's Tooth, your Rocket Belt, none of your major items are changing and Katarina herself, there are no direct nerfs here. So Kat comes in at number 14, guys. Now beating Katarina to the 13th spot on this countdown is Zack. And Zack hasn't really made that much noise recently, well, in these countdowns anyway, but in solo queue, he really has and is actually one of the most successful champions in the game. But why is that? Well, a few patches ago, his W got buffed, which means your clear speed is going to be a little better. The jungle changes also helped, and seeing as Sunfire Aegis is back to kind of what he used to be, this means that, Zack, you're in a good position. But here's the thing next patch, guys. There is a new item coming in that I think is going to be really interesting for Zack especially. This is Anathema's Chains. And what this is giving you is 650 health, which is one of the most important stats for Zack, and 20 ability haste for just 2,500 gold. That's right, 2,500 gold for all of that. Now, what's also interesting is that you're getting an active called Vow, which allows you to choose an enemy champion. This enemy champion you choose, so it might be a Vayne, it might be a mid laner, it might be a really strong DPS or like a bruiser or a fighter, you are going to take up to 30% reduced damage from that champion. And at this 30% max stacks, this enemy champion has reduced tenacity while near you. And because when you're playing Zack, you're going to be in the enemy team up in their grill, this is almost always going to apply. Now, I want you guys in the comments to tell me what you think of this item, first of all. And if you think on Zack, it's going to be the most OP. Now, there are a couple of other champions on this list that I've put in here, specifically for Anathema's Chains. But I think for Zack, going to be one of the strongest combinations. Now, ahead of Zack, guys, coming in at number 12, we have another mage mid laner coming in, and this is Ari. And Ari has been one of the most stable, consistent, good picks all season. Next patch, going to be even better because Luden's Tempest, Leandra's Anguish, Everfrost, whatever you decide to build, these are all 200 gold cheaper. And Ari is one of those mid laners, guys, who's always going to be good, right? Because you have pretty much everything you'd ever want. You have self peel, you have wave clear, you have sustain, you have kill threat, you have setup, you have pretty much everything. So Ari comes in at number 12 in a better position next patch. Now, another mid laner beating Ari to the number 11 spot is Arkali. And you're seeing a lot of Arkali played in pro play at the moment. Why? Well, it's just because she's broken, right? Her mid to late game is insane, especially after level six. Yes, your early game into range champions can be a little difficult to navigate because you can get harassed and chunked. But if you start D shield and fleet footwork, you take these two into those matchups, you're going to be fine. And yes, once you do hit level six, this is the scariest level six on the rift. I'm telling you right now, this is why you're seeing it in pro play. Also because of her sorcerer shoes and hextech rocket belt, how well she works with these two as well. So Akali has to come in at number 11, guys. Now, starting off the top 10, if you guys are enjoying these countdown series, make sure to let us know by leaving a like down below. Coming in at number 10 is Fiora. And Fiora, guys, is one of the few bruiser fighters who isn't getting touched by any of the item changes next patch. So Black Lever doesn't really affect you. Strive Breaker, you don't have to build. You can just go Gore Drinker. And as for the rest of your build, Ravenous Hydra, Steris Gage, these are all unchanged. But what's also interesting is the new item Hole Breaker. And I'm sure you've all seen this by now, which is giving you a bunch of health and also attack damage, but also split pushing power. And for Fiora, because you are one of the best split pushers on the Rift, this is going to mean that you can 1v9 more games and rely less on your team. And let's be honest, who wants to do that? So Fiora comes in at number 10. Now, this next champion is going to take a lot of you by surprise. But for Talia, you guys who main her are going to know what I'm talking about here. Talia, guys, is one of the best champions on the Rift right now, especially in higher reload. She has a 53% win rate at least, actually. And this is in the jungle, by the way. But yes, next patch, because the Mage Mythics are going to be less gold. So with Luden's Tempest with Sorcerer Shoes, this Mythic Power Spike you're going to get earlier in a game. And because you're Talia, roaming around the map and getting kills and making plays is actually really easy. So you're going to come across more gold than most other junglers. You still have one of the best clears. And yes, even though you are squishy, you don't have to worry that much about Assassin's next patch because Prowler's Claw is pretty much getting deleted. The cooldown is more. Champions can only use the active on champions now. And the lethality is down as well, which is great for you. So Talia comes in at number nine, guys. Super underrated. So make sure you start buying her. Now coming in at number eight, we have a champion who's been on pretty much every one of these countdowns. And this is Annie. And why is Annie on here again? Well, it's simple, right? Sorcerer Shoes, Hextech Rocket Belt. What is there not to like? You can even consider going Luden's Tempest now because it's going to be 200 gold cheaper. So it's all good for Annie next patch. You have one of the scariest level sixes in the game. Your stun gives you the setup. You have decent wave clear. It's easy to last hit on her because of her Q. And a bit like Anivia, even if you are struggling in the landing phase, you're always going to be useful because of that insane ultimate of yours and team fighting potential. Now ahead of Annie, guys, coming in at number seven for next patch is Zin Zhao, the Essence Reaver, the Gore Drinker, the Steric Gage Zin Zhao. This build is so interesting. And this is why you're seeing Zin being played so much in pro play right now. And guess what? Next patch, he's not getting nerfed. Neither are his items. Now you can maybe opt to go for Shield Bow. You can maybe opt to go for Eclipse, but I'm telling you, Gore Drinker, Essence Reaver, Steric Gage, this three 
item combo makes you unkillable and gives you an insane amount of damage and sustain that no enemy team is going to be able to deal with you. So since our stays is one of the best champions on the rift. Now beating Zim to the number six spot is another mid laner. I told you guys this patch was going to be mage central. This is Malzahar. Why? Leandro's Anguish is 200 gold cheaper. Great. So you're going to get to that spike earlier, which means your wave clear is going to be better. Your damage to even like barons and dragons you might consider. This is going to be better as well. And the fact that Malzahar for pretty much the whole season has had like a top five, top 10 win rate at least for every single patch. Well, how can I not put him in here? So Malzahar comes in at number six. Now this next pick guys coming in at number five is going to ruffle a few feathers here. And it's actually super interesting because for me, I think Trundle is going to be great, especially in lower elos. Now, the reason for this is because Divine Sundra is only getting nerfed for ranged champions. So shout out to you, Azrael. So for melee champions, it's still going to remain the same. So for Trundle, you're happy. So if you were to go Titanic Hydra, Divine Sundra, and then the new Hole Breaker, which I think is going to be great for Trundle because health is an important stat and attack damage, like who doesn't want that? And then you have to think about the split pushing power, of course. Like if you combine all of this with Trundle's ultimate, how on earth can you 1v1 it? Now, maybe there are a couple of champions who can do this, but for most champions on the Rift, guys, it is going to be impossible to 1v1 v1 the troll so trundle comes in at number five now moonstone renewer is getting buffed next patch okay i mentioned that for sona but shirelia's battle song even though it is getting nerfed so the movement speed is decreasing for lulu the real power for shirelia's guys is in the movement speed you give to an ally you empower and yourself of course so lulu comes in at number four simply because that shirelia's battle song power which is yeah making you op at the moment this isn't going anywhere it's still going to be in the game so lulu comes in at number four as the best support the best spellcaster in the game now kicking off the top three guys as we get into these, it is the Jizz's last running reminder to you to check out the Game Week website for all of our Red Hot exclusive videos that are made fresh, they're made daily. We don't just recycle them from YouTube, okay, and then sell them to you. No, these are original, these are fresh, these are made by challenger tier coaches and players around the world that are going to guarantee improvement, and these will help you climb out of ELO hell and achieve your goals this season. So check them out. Links, as always, in the description and comment section, GameWeave.com. Now, coming in at number three, guys, well, he's actually fallen out of the top 20 countdown ever since Riot nerfed him after Buffy him a ridiculous amount. This is Yorick. Now next patch, why is Yorick going to be one of the best champions? Simply because of Holebreaker. Split pushing is going to be the aim of the game next patch. I'm telling you, top laners, you are back, but only if you can build this item. And for Yorick, this is what you're about split pushing, right? With your Maiden, with all your single target damage. Like unless the enemy team sends five towards you with five Grievous wounds, there is no way you're going to be stopped. And even if you are 0-3 and you're having a tough game, you can still come back in the game because this power is going to be ridiculous with the new Holebreaker. So Yorick has to to come in at number three guys now coming in at number two is not a top laner it's not a split pusher this is actually a jungler an ap jungler in fact who is still going to be incredibly powerful this is fiddlesticks sorcerer shoes hextech rocket belt you have one of the best early game clears in the game because you can full clear before scuttle crab spawns and because of your insane ultimate with those sorcerer shoes with that hextech rocket belt with that zonya's hourglass which you're going to get later it is incredibly annoying to deal with and play against it's almost impossible to put a fiddlesticks down and this is why the sticks guys comes in at number two who still has one of the best win rates in the game by the way there are no signs of nurse coming to him or his items to so get around the sticks next patch now the number one champion guys for patch 11 13 i reckon some of you can guess who this is because i mentioned divine sundra this isn't changing for melee champions i also mentioned holebreaker which is now the new split pushing item i also mentioned anathema's chains who you can build on this champion and coming in at number one guys for 11 13 is nasus i think this is his second patch this season where he's been number one now you might be like how on earth can you put susan number one like i dumped the Nasus in lane. Yeah, okay, you might dumpster him in the first four or five levels, but what about when he hits level nine? And when he gets to his Sheen, when he gets to his Divine Sundra, five points in Q, he gets to his Holebreaker, he can even build Anathema's Chains because health is a really important stat, so is attack damage. So if you're against a Fiora, a Camille, if you use your Anathema's Chains on them, how do you lose the 1v1? And maybe you're really mental and you want to go and team fight with your team on Nasus, you can use this on the enemy Vayne, the enemy ADC, the enemy mid laner, and there's no way anyone stops you from going ham. So it's going to be very interesting next patch, guys, what these two Two items due to the meta but these are my predictions hopefully you enjoyed the video again let me know in the comments what you think this has been the jizz and until tomorrow's upload bye